this may be a long video. I think I'll put it on YouTube just because it's time. And it's a response video to this fellow. And, um, yeah, I'm going to try to provoke a response. So I'll try not to break any of the rules of his civility, his tyrannical rules of personality, affect, that you're not allowed to have. <laughs> yeah. A few videos back, I had an interesting exchange on the subject of um, what an antinatalist law might look like. What, would, what form would antinatalist legislation take place? Yeah, and you probably, again, misparaphrased it, phrased it, and botched it all to pieces, okay? It's not part of Benatar's book at all. Any conversation about that, I think, is pretty much exclusive to YouTube and me, okay, in some way or another. Um, and there's been all kinds of suggestions about what first steps are. First steps would be things like quit subsidizing child production, make people who have babies decide to play the reproductive game, um, pay for their reproductive choice. Just like vegetarians have to sometimes pay a little extra, um, a little bit of inconvenience for their dietary habit and choice. Um, lots of people have choices in life and they should have to pay the freight for those choices. Uh, I've suggested gun owners should pay uh, for what it costs to compensate victims of, of non-criminal gun violence, uh, you know, wives getting shot by husbands and such. Um, that yes, they should have to pay a little bit of a tax on their gun for the cost of their, their privilege of buying guns. Well, people who choose to have children should not extort money from the minority of citizens who don't and steal the value of their house, charge them $10,000 a year just to exist, to finance their public schools and their free uh, medical and their other um, 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 indulgences, the investments they want uh, society to make in their reproductive choice, their choice to have children. So that would be a first step, is to take away the subsidies. Hmm, makes sense. Um, then, <laughs> uh, then also you could pay people, you know, to just make a deal with people on welfare, and you just simply say, look, you can have welfare. You can have bonus welfare, even, even extra welfare, if you will go through a procedure that will make you incapable of creating more burdens for society to take care of. Just because you have a capacity to reproduce, just like I have a capacity to throw a fist, doesn't mean I have a right to. And we throw criminals in jail if they throw their fist, okay, without um, doing it um, within some sort of constraint, okay? Just like they have a responsibility to um, conduct their, their penal activities in a certain reasonable and fair manner. Um, these are things you can't just use. You can't just say, I have it, I will use it in any way I please. And your reproductivity is the same thing. You have to take responsibility for it. And because a society would impose responsibility for people's reproductive decisions is not tyranny. It's friggin' rational thinking. But start with those. That's where you start. And we know in the world, then it, the politics gets more complicated. So then you have to have international agreements. And then you say to countries, look, this, your birth rate is out of control. We're trying to fix a lot of things in the world. We're trying to civilize the world. We're trying to give everybody an iPod. Um, and we're also trying not to burn the planet down. And this excessive population growth in your country is not conducive to the rest of the world having a civilization. It means other countries have to burn coal because you're burning all this oil. It means a lot of things. It has implications. And to play with the civilized people in the world, you're going to have to say, yes, I want to be civilized. All right? And so we have to put sanctions on them. You have to, you have to reward and punish. You have to use the carrot wherever possible. And then if you have to, only if you have to, you use the whip. Is there something evil and nasty and horrid in that simple statement? Carrots first whips as a last resort is there something about that that is just so obnoxious it came to light that um, at least one person believed that um, the law 
through the normal democratic processes of uh, legislation, um, uh, possible challenge by the courts, constitutionality, etc., um, would enact legislation to restrict or uh, sanction or perhaps prohibit reproduction. Well, let's understand, too, that once you have a solid majority on any issue, you essentially can rewrite the Constitution. It's yours to rewrite. So if you have a solid majority, a super majority on a certain subject, you are beyond any, any um, question of the authority of the people to act. That's democracy. Yeah, it's not perfect, but you have a better idea, Mr. Stalin? There, I'll do it to you. Do you have a better idea, Mr. Hitler? The thinking went that, well, we've already done this to things like rape and murder and assault, etc. So we're simply adding one more um, category. Yeah, we've done it to a lot more than rape and murder. We've created laws about drug use, what kind of things you can put in your own body, whether you can, have, uh, whether you can commit suicide. People have gotten into other people's business all over the place, and a lot of those things, there's a minority that complain but there's no majority that complains, and that's a problem, I'd say, in some of those cases. But again, that's the, that's the system, and when people advocate that they'll fight with the system, they won't, as a minority, um, trespass, and then you're still going to complain. Well, that's a little bit, <laughs> that's just obnoxious. Uh, one more crime, I, I suppose, to, those, to that list of harms. And we're simply um, outlawing them. We would be outlawing them for the same reason that we're outlawing all the other ones. It shouldn't be that difficult of a, of a thing to wrap one's head around. In terms of the ivory tower, no. And if you accept certain assumptions, I agree. Um, but in terms of... Yeah, but, but, but. Yeah, there's always this, this, this but, you know, that just, that just blows up the whole equation. All right? I mean... You can just stop right where you stopped. You work through the democratic process, you get a majority, and you implement law that you think is in the best interest of, of all things possible. All right, Just like we might have to implement lots of energy restrictions and sanctions and all that kind of stuff in the future because of the greenhouse problem and the fuel problem. Now those are going to require legislation. It's going to be obnoxious to some people. It's going to, be, it's going to limit their, their liberty. Well, that's just the price of being a civilization, isn't it? Reality, what we would have to do if we did that, um, human civilization simply wouldn't be around to evolve concepts like uh, legality. Uh, like yeah, well, I don't know what that even means. I have to go back. I mean, what does that mean? That, that is it. That is not but. Then you're going to just say something uh, incomprehensible? Be around to evolve concepts like uh, we get go back further. If we did that, um, human civilization simply wouldn't be around to evolve concepts like. If we I did agree. that, um, but in terms of reality, what we would have to do if we did that, um, human civilization simply wouldn't be around to evolve concepts like. Uh, I don't even. What are you talking about? Human civilization wouldn't be around. There's seven billion people. They're going to be around for, you know, most of them. Uh, every decade you'd lose a certain number if all reproduction stopped tomorrow. Mines would still work. People would still be engaged in the world. Legality, uh, like the law, like um, the constitutions and, and human rights codes, etc. If we'd ever at any point outlawed um, reproduction. <clears throat> Again, reproduction is just one activity of all the activities you conduct. You eat every day. You have to eat through the law. You don't get to steal your food. We have laws about how you can kill animals. We tell you how you can do it. Okay, you got to do it within this constraint. Okay, so again, the argument isn't you can't have children. I've suggested a voucher system which would enable the non-procreators to give their vouchers to the people they thought who earned it, so to speak, who needed more than one child. But the fact is you could give out a voucher system for a replacement population that would inevitably lead to 
the decline in human population and people would still be allowed to have children and those who really really desperately needed to have more than their allotment of two children can just make a YouTube video and say could somebody please give me your voucher because I'm just so super at being a mom that I need to have another kid um, there's systems you can create that allow people to have what they want but have it within some constraint that meets the demands of civilization. And civilization has a right to make statements. And there's a clear statement here we're saying the majority would possess. The statement the majority would be aware of is that life is intrinsically impositional. You can't do it without imposing on something, imposing risk on them. And that is in an Aristotelian way fundamentally a trespass. That's the first cause. And it's not a good cause. Okay, it's a cause of one's own selfish projection onto something else. That is, in most philosophers' understanding, kind of the definition of a crime. So we would probably have to go at the very basis of what we assumed the law was for, because this idea is a revolutionary well, idea. I don't think it has anything to do with the law is for the conduct of rational purposes for the benefit of the organisms um, protected by the law. We have already extended the law to protect slaves and women and all this other crap from the past. This is, we have extended it now to animals in many respects. We're still far short of the mark there because we allow the wild wilderness farming. We allow animals in the wild to be treated brutally and nastily and not the same way we allow domestic animals to be treated, which is an obscenity to logic. Um, but the point is, is we see the direction the human race is moving in. And we're just extending that and saying this is the real goal. This is the real deal. It's understanding that what we are, okay, is just a sentience. And that's all. We're not functioning in any other manner. And all of these other sentience are all part of a DNA molecule's progression into the future. And we've only had certain knowledge of that for less than 200 years. Okay, and we haven't really dealt with the implications of the truth of evolution. And one of those implications is, is that none of this is intrinsically meritorious. That all of it has to be analyzed, and we have to figure out whether this system is fair or right. If we were bees, if bees had acquired intelligence first, and it only existed in the queen and her, and her princesses and princesses, okay, and all the drones were ignorant but still suffering beings, the bees would have a dilemma created by nature they would have a problem to deal with. You know, that they, they by nature, were creating these, these, these non-reproductive, non-self-living um, prisoners of nature. And they would have to deal with the fact that it is intrinsically and fundamentally an unethical system that can't be defended. We have dilemmas because we are human and sentient, and we are the authority on this planet we are responsible now. It's our game. It's not God's game. It's not nature's game. It's our game. And we're responsible for what it does by nature. And you don't want that responsibility, clearly. Yeah. Um, the only countries that I can think of that have ever actually implemented um, uh, sanctioned, in other words, penalized uh, programs. Right, and again, we've argued for incentivized programs. So China was an uncivilized country, we can argue that, correct? I mean, it had all kinds of backward problems. It wasn't a rich country when it started its policies. All right, and maybe if it had a little bit of money, it could have done it the right way. It could have incentivized behavior rather than punished behavior. Yes, the whip is always cheaper than carrots. You buy the whip once and you can use it a million times. All right, and the carrots, you gotta buy them every day. So yeah, carrots are a little more expensive, but I've advocated carrots first. So point your, your, your slander, okay? I don't know any other anti-natalist who's done anything other than, than offer, to say carrots first, carrots first. So, so point your slander somewhere else. 
to prevent people from having kids or to, to actively control people's reproductive rights have been totalitarian or at the very least authoritarian. Well, once again, it is you can't get more in somebody else's business than to have them as a child to say, I am competent to be their parent, even though I'm too old and I won't be around in the end. And there's very little likelihood of that because all my, my risk equations increase now. I'm more likely to get cancer. I'm more likely to get a lot of things. Your 50s and 60s are the hardest years to live through. And yet you think you're, you're, you're being a responsible human being. You think you're fulfilling some entitlement. Well, where does that entitlement come from? I don't think it comes from anywhere other than where my fist came from. I'm, I'm allowed to use my fist without reason, without rationality, without respect for the impact, its impact on others. That's all you're saying. Dick makes right. Huh? You're not using logic to defend. You're just using nature. You're resorting to nature and saying nature says so. Well, I call that ignorance. Preposterous ignorance. It's difficult to actually have a democratic society that will go to that extent, to go to that extreme, to enforce a completely, radically revolutionary idea that is... Yeah, 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 okay, okay, it's radical, it's revolutionary, but is it, in real substance, all that radical and revolutionary? Okay, ab abolishing slavery was radical and revolutionary. Giving women the vote was radical and revolutionary. But was it really? I mean, really, really, on, on its face, in hindsight, it wasn't radical and revolutionary. It was inevitable, just like the first airplane was inevitable. The Wright brothers were, yay, I'm glad they showed up. It's too bad the, you know, whatever, the Booger Nose brothers didn't show up maybe 30 years earlier. You know, right? I mean, you could always just say, "What? What were they the really the first, or were somebody else would have done it, but he got cancer when he was 22, so he couldn't do it." You know, so we could have had it earlier, we could have had it later, but the fact is, we were inevitably going to have it. We were going to have wheels, and then we're going to have wagons, and then we're going to have this. We're going to progress, and part of progress is ethical progress, understanding, philosophical progress. Again, there is, it is a glaring dilemma for the human race to deal with is the fact that all this sentience is being managed by a DNA molecule. It isn't being managed or cared for by a loving mother. It isn't, it isn't getting any of that. Okay, It's being managed by a cruel process that has no conception of right and wrong. Please, sir, this is idiotic for you to sit there and call that radical thinking. No, it's just thinking that human beings haven't done because they've been myopic, because they have been close-minded and shielded from reality for thousands of years, just like people in Afghanistan now. Do you think it's a, it would be radical if they grew the frig up and realized that the women they're abusing are, are human beings? That would be radical? No, it wouldn't be. It would be sensible. It would be unretarded. Assumed to be, in today's world, a, a basic human right, the right to reproduce. Well, again, you're going to assume a right, the right to throw my fist, the right to stick my dick wherever the fuck I want, whenever I want. That is just absolute nonsense, and that's all you're saying. Because you have a reproductive capacity that somehow you are obliged, or you are free, or you are fully right capable in using it any way you please. If you wish to have ten children and you wish to starve them to death, it is somehow your right. Well, it is not your right, and that's what civilization has already declared, that it is not some sort of unlimited right. We have already put strict limitations on your conduct in this procedure. We would have to sort of redo our entire view of the law. Again, how is it a redo of our entire view of the law if we say something like, um, yes, uh, rape victims should have an absolute right to abortion. Um, uh, uh, I mean, we go down the whole list of all the, the consequential implications of procreation. We have all kinds of laws about what you can do. You can't suffocate your own baby. You can't do a lot of things. You have to go through the civil procedure. 
and the civil procedure is just saying that we are going to make it possible for you to con use your reproductivity within the confines of the law. And the law is going to get stricter, just like the laws on other things are going to get stricter because necessity demands it. Either ethical necessity or practical, real world, you're not going to, civilization will be destroyed uh, 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 reality. Um, again, because this has never been attempted uh, to that extent in a modern society. Well, again, these are not arguments against something. To say it hasn't been, been done before is just useless. What good is that going to do the Wright brothers? What good is that going to be do the world that has to deal with the airplane? I mean, this is just useless nonsense. The argument is, is, is it right or wrong? Is it the appropriate way to maneuver from this circumstance to the next circumstance? I've given you the Frankenstein um, um, model here. What are the rights of the Frankensteins in this circumstance? Well, they're negotiating. They're saying, I will negotiate with you. And if I can get most of the people to believe that Frankenstein is wrong, if I can do that in a democratic way, what right does Frankenstein have to fill the moat with crocodiles and start firing the cannon? I would argue he has no such right. <clears throat> no. The thinking that uh, goes that the law is there to prevent harm. That's why we have laws against murder and rape and violence and assault and, and home invasion and all that sort of thing. Yeah, they're trespasses against somebody else's first right of consent. That's sort of logically where you can go with this. There are first causes. There are first trespasses. And everything else imp is an implication of that first jeopardy that the thing was put at. It's a solid thing, and you start knocking the legs off. Well, you have to start going with the person that knocks the first leg off. Even though it's going to fall because of the last leg knocked off, you have to go to the first leg. The law is not there to prevent harm, and it never has been. Well, so straw man much? I mean, really, you tell us what the law has been created for, then you tell us why the law is wrong. Find an antinatalist who has wrongly defined what the law is for. Go ahead and do that, and then make this argument. But no, you won't do that, because that would be what an honorable person would do. I am prepared to argue that very point, even if it takes a few dozen more videos. That's a gigantic fallacy that apparently even the good Mr. Benatar falls into. Well, whatever. I, I mean, you want to change the subject? Fine. Go ahead and change the subject. You think the law has some specific intent beyond, through time, evolving to create civilization. That's the purpose of the law. We create laws to deter crime. We create circumstances that enhance civilization. It, that's, and that's an ambiguous goal. It's an ambiguously defined shiny city on a hill. But the law basically is what makes Oz. You don't have Oz without law. That's what law makes possible, is the creation of something better. The creation of interaction between human beings that can be conducted in a manner that doesn't destroy, that actually creates a foundation for creation of something of of, of, of value and integrity. A fallacy is a fallacy, and I don't care if you've got a doctor before your name. Uh, you're still committing a fallacy. Well, more straw man. Uh -huh. I, don't, I don't think the title of this book was The Law and Its Purposes. I don't think that was the title of this book. So this is just, this is just where you, you know, this is just impossibly obnoxious. Thank you. Wow, so this video didn't even say anything. It is absolutely zero content. I played a video with it, absolutely zero content. Amazing. <laughs> yeah, amazing. So let's, re I'll, I'll read the comments and I'll read his, his comment here. I, you know, why do we have laws, question mark? What's worse than rape? When... You find that out, you will know everything, won't you? Well, rape is a bad crime, but you know, there's lots worse. There's torture and then rape. There's torture, rape, 
death. Um, there's surgery in, you know, 1642. I mean, how would you like to go have, a, um, you know, a, a breast surgery, you know, in 1600s? Yeah, I don't think you would. I guess that's worse than rape. Uh, the idea that you would struggle and try to cling to life so badly that you would allow somebody to take a big giant knife and start hacking pieces of you off uh, uh, while you had no way to relieve the pain. <laughs> That's as about as bad as it can get, I think. I can't think of how it can get much worse than that. Having parts of you shivved off while you're uh, conscious and awake? Yeah, no. Doesn't sound like a good idea to me. All right, eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth, hand for a hand, foot for a foot. Um, the Bible, okay, whatever, wiki. An eye for an eye is a principle that a person who has injured another person is simply injured in retribution, or according to other interpretations, the victim receives value of the injury and compensate, compensation. Yeah, well, that's the trick of it, right? You know. And, and what what exactly how is how do you how do you compensate somebody for say their free speech right? You, you know it's this fundamental right we have. Let's say it is obnoxiously suppressed by somebody. How do you put a value on it? Ten cents? What was it worth? So again, this doesn't work. Not everything of value can be re, can can be monetized rationally. It doesn't have some sort of rational value. It has a meaning value, and it has a value to civilization as a whole. Because any, incur any encouragement is just one encouragement, but it's so fundamental because it's going to make everybody else afraid. If one person gets um, run over by something, and a thousand people are participating in the same activity, well, they're going to think, well, I don't want to get run over. And so they're going to say, I don't want to bother with my free speech rights if I'm going to end up in prison for it. So it takes one incursion, violates the rights of thousands of people because it's intimidating through intimidation. So this doesn't work as ethical law. It goes absolutely nowhere because you're not compensating for the real crime. You're not compensating for the real value lost. Um, and you can't do it anyway. You can't monetize these things. The damage done to the future. So, so these crimes, would, it would be an eye for, for, you would have to give up a life for an eye in the wrong circumstance. Certain eyes are worth so much, are so precious, that you'd have to give your life for that eye. You couldn't, you, you have to have a higher penalty. You have to have a punitive damage, a damage that is in excess to make it clear that this is not a crime you are allowed to commit. And certainly when you're an authority, when you're a, when you're a public servant, your obligation should be even higher. So if you trespass in even the minor way, um, you should be subjected to many times the body part toll for your crime. But again, criminal justice is a different subject than antinatalism. There's lots of modifications we can make to criminal justice. And, and it's, again, it it's has evolved from the past where it was so much about retribution to a future, to a present, where it is about prevention. It is about creating deterrence to crime. So again, this is not the subject of antinatalism, and it is, it, is, it is not even straw man, it is mud man, to bring this stuff up in this context. This is just throwing mud on the subject. This is a huge, pointless distraction. Um, really offensive. All right, let's go to the comments. See y'all. I guess I better thread them because there won't be any coherency if I don't. Probably won't be anyway. Um, all right, well, we'll start at the top. I, I don't know how this threaded crap works anyway. It doesn't seem to work at all, but... Well, oh, I'll start at the bottom, right? I mean, there should be the later, the first comments. Uh, I predict that anti -Nilius movement will go the same way as the shakers so this is again this is another person who thinks philosophies are something bred in people that you're born Muslim you're born Christian you're born a scientist you're born an evolutionist these are all things that you pop out of the vagina as we know that anyone in a open civilization there will be little correlation between the parents and the children. The children will in all probability be exactly the opposite in their political 
views as the parents because they will be generation gapped and the, the, the child will resent the parents' philosophy as part of the um, structure of, of, of rules and restrictions and, and suffocation. So, so the, the screaming liberal will give birth to the Ayn Randiest um, as a protest. The Catholics, Catholics give birth to the, 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 well, to the nihilists, actually. Sadistic, insane nihilists, actually, um, generally speaking. Um, so, th but the, the ignorance of this comment, it's got two thumbs up. I mean, this is so profoundly ignorant. And none of you people can just say to this guy, that is profoundly ignorant. Uh, I mean, you don't know anything about evolution. We do not genetically inherit a philosophy. This philosophy of antinatalism has earned its existence in the world. Purely earned it. It has no genetic component, and yet it exists. And it is your prediction that this, this thought process that is entirely based on the concept of empathy and an understanding of evolution is somehow doesn't have a future. I would argue that it is the future. That you, I mean, somebody should find your grave and thoroughly piss on it in the future. I mean, you are, you are, you are, uh, obs you, you are obscene in this nonsense. This is obscene nonsense. Why don't you just say, I like to stick lollipops up my butthole? I mean, it would be more intelligent if that's what you had said. Um, okay, let's see what these idiots say. Cute cat faith. This is another moron, so she's sure going to say something dumb. <laughs> I read a wonderful article years ago in Yankee Magazine about someone who has raised, was raised as an orphan by shakers. So now they're talking about shakers. You're talking about straw man or what? Um, it was a religion, you idiots, okay, and nobody is exposed to it, then no one's going to adopt it. That's the way it works, right? If it's an idiotic idea, a silly philosophy, yes, no one's going to sit there and give birth and say, okay, let's expose them to shakerism and see if they become a shaker. It's still not going to happen. No one's going to adopt the idea. It, it, it's one built, okay, I see, I didn't finish my point, but it is only in closed societies where shakers breed shakers, Quakers breed Quakers. Even right now, Quakers aren't breeding Quakers. Quakers are breeding kids who say, I want to get the hell out of here because I'm ha I've kind of had it with this whole, you know, shoe in the horse bullshit. And I want my iPad. Yes, they're gone. And I grew up near Shaker Heights, Ohio. But the details I read there and elsewhere were very interesting. I think it reflected well on those people. And also what happened when some of them got the urge to merge. Uh, quietly gone by morning no longer spoken of so it goes well again philosophy is not inherited in anything called a civilization you don't inherit philosophy you are given the world to look at with an internet and you are able to make your own judgments about what idea of life what life narrative makes sense if that a nasty jab I suppose. A, a, an ignorant jab. Why didn't you just say an ignorant jab? But you don't understand, you don't understand uh, evolution either, do you, uh, Andy? Uh, but at least people have a generally flavorable view of the shakers, harmless eccentrics. Well, harmless in, the sen in what sense? Uh, I mean, the, y y y y you know, uh, yes, they didn't, they didn't have children, so they had nothing to hurt. Is that what you mean by harmless? But if, what if they did have children? What if they attempted to indoctrinate their children? Would you still call them harmless? Yeah, isn't that funny that the real component of harm is the capacity of people to brainwash and manipulate and, and pervert their children? I'm not so sure Benetarianism is as likely to be so lucky. Well, again, um, you want to call it Benetarianism now? So now we got we got antinatalist, we got uh, ethicist, and now we got Benetarianists. Oh, man, you you people are really incredible. The political divisions uh, to invent are plentiful. Uh, do anti whatever this anarchists reject any such law? How about anti? Oh, I'm not going to get into this anarchy crap might want laws that prohibit both simply because birth is kind of gross. Well, whatever. I'm just no, no point in talking to people that are 
just making noise. Uh, when are when are a these this isn't these aren't rational comments. I mean they're not even literate. All right, forget. It. I'm not gonna read crap. All right, well, I'm gonna read Rosebush. It's a whole conversation here. Even the Chinese were not so insane as to enforce a zero child policy. Uh, their demographic would go to shit. Well, uh, you know, <laughs> you know their demographic. No, their demographics would maintain would stay the same. Obviously, their their population would get old and their civilization would die. And obviously, in this world, they're not going to do that unilaterally. But again, they didn't have to go to a zero child policy. That's not what anti natalists or most of them are even advocating. Okay, one child policy will do get the job done. But yeah, the law exists to make society function. A sane law would, of course, emulate recognizable ethical principles. Well, what does that mean? Recognizable by who? Lollipop chasers? I mean, you know, this, this whole idea of what, what would you recognize, huh? So, so what somebody else recognizes, like the, the sentience of other uh, animals, you can't figure that one out. You, you can't recognize uh, an obligation to that, 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 comp that capacity to be sensate. Um, and you're going to tell me what I need to recognize? No, I'm sorry, silly person. Even if only to not provoke too much opposition, but that is not the main objective. Um, well, whatever. I think it is the main objective, um, is, to, is to do it as in benignly as possible. The interesting thing is that all the people who are studying the matter project that population will not overwhelm the Earth's resources. All of them? So, so this is Andy again. So he has some statistics somewhere that all of the people, all of the people who are studying the matter project that population will not overwhelm the Earth's resources. Theoretically, it's already overwhelmed the world. You're, you, we're cutting down the rainforest. The, the, the coral reefs are dying. Um, it's a sort of resource management is what can be maintained, okay? The fact that you can produce food doesn't mean anything if you need gallons and gallons and buckets and barrels and barrels of oil to produce that food. All these high-yield crops come at a high price. They need a ton of fertilizer. Expensive energy has to go in. So, again, this is nonsense to say that there's... It won't overwhelm the Earth's resources. I guess you don't believe that the Earth is in dire jeopardy of being sunk into carbon suffocation. You don't believe that's taking place right now. Well, that's a resource. Oxygen is a resource, idiot. I mean, a balance between oxygen and carbon in the atmosphere. That's one of the resources, is the atmosphere, fella. Uh, at least in the next hundred years. Population expected to grow, plateau, and then go into a slow, sustained decline over the next 100 years. Again, these are, these are projections, and these same projections were wrong 100 years ago, and they were wrong 200 years ago. There's lots of things that are going to happen in the next few years that are going to change this whole dynamic. Um, but yeah, it really depends on whether people get dumber or smarter. You know, the, 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 the thing you can tie reliably to procreation is ignorance. The more ignorant they are, the more they're going to replicate, the more they're going to reproduce. When we blew up Iraq, uh, guess what? We increased birth rates by tenfold. When we invaded Afghanistan, guess what? We increased birth rates by whatever, three times. So, so <laughs> you know, make people dumb, uh, deny them resources and civilization, and they'll just sit around and have babies. Yes, that's going to present us with all sorts of challenges. The demographic age spread is going to become more top-heavy. Well, again, these are not uh, insurmountable problems. These are only problems to people who have no imagination. Uh, less young people will need to support the old people. They shouldn't be supporting the old people in the first place. That's where this whole thing kind of crumbles into pieces, is this whole idea that you're going to use the the productivity of the young to, to um, somehow support the old. No, the old should support themselves out of their own industry. We have the ability to develop the sustainable technology that will make that possible. Let's hope that we can find the will to. Yeah, well, keep dreaming on. You have no evidence of any of this getting ready for anything, preparing for anything. Um, so you're, you're the last man that has a right to complain when the whole thing turns to shit because you were one of the people that just naysayed and nitpicked the thing into shit. 
One of the reasons it works is because people can see the benefit of their children. Having fewer kids means more of them get to go to school, etc. A lot of people accept the one-child policy for the sake of their child, which totally flies in the face of what ANs want to do. I don't know. Why, why is that fly in the face of it? Um, how is there an inconsistency here? You're saying that ANs don't care about children? That's nonsense. So again, all straw men. Um, of course, but anything sane will do that. I don't even know what that means. Ha ha, that's true. Ha ha, ha ha. You're just, you're just bad joke tellers. Um, I've only known Chinese people since about the 80s, um, but more. I've known Westerners who lived, worked, and studied there going back quite a, a ways. The latter were all agreed that we, Westerners, really don't have any idea what this vast complex country is or was like. Well, this is just more talk. I have better anecdotal stories than you. The anecdotal stories coming out of China, the testimony coming out of Chinese people is, is that their country is too crowded. There's people that are committing suicide just because they can't stand how crowded it is in their country, um, you know, especially the cities. I had a good time talking with Chinese students here in France about this policy back in 2010. Actually, it has caused demographic problems. They are going to be very, very short of workers in 10 years, so they'll still be still a world as well as we know it. Look, it hasn't been that huge a change in their population increase, okay? You're only talking about a few million, okay? In a world where we got 7 billion people. So if you're talking about maybe 100 million less Chinese people, is not exactly um, a catastrophic glut in worldwide workers. So again, this is more just nonsense. Of course, demographics change because their lifespan is changing, okay? Uh, 30 years ago, they lived to be 50 years old. Now they're living to be 80 years old. I mean, it's a little bit of a difference, right? But no, you people won't get rational and pay any attention to the rational truth. Absolutely, and similar problems arise in countries like Italy where a similar thing happens. Not because government implemented a corrosive policy with punitive measures for those who didn't comply, but simply because people think, thanks to their increased affluence, naturally decide they don't need large families anymore, or any family. Well, I figured that was going to happen eventually. Ugh, I'd be back. Yeah, some damn human being recorded message. You know, these people ought to be in goddamn... <laughs> they ought to be in um, trash compactor prison. These goddamn telemarketing lying cunts. Um, yeah, so this whole idea, exactly. So that's, that You're already making the anti-natalist argument right here. People are choosing not to have these children. They're choosing. This is where the majority is heading, is not having children. And you're almost talking like, oh, we've got to stop that because they have a demographic problem because of that. Well, no, there's no demographic problem that's not overcomable with the simple idea that you, it costs money. You pay for it. We're, we're paying twice as much for our health care as every other country in the world. Well, maybe that's stupid. And maybe you have to change those numbers. Yeah, okay? It's not a big deal. You change the numbers. You change what people get. The political divisions to... Um, invent are plentiful. Do anti... Again, this anarchy crap. So this guy has a whole fucking agenda. Um, so fuck this shit. I predict the anti-natalist movement will go... Okay, so... Oh yeah, that's I was going up, not down. My mistake. Okay, so we're done with the rosebushy bullshit. That's good. Oh, hell no. You are going to do a couple more dozen videos. Please, somebody shoot me. Actually, I like your videos. It's Professor Anton that drives me batty. You put out some good shit. Yeah, well, Valhalla, guys. Idiot. Um, exactly what's good about this shit? Oh, yeah, sorry. I missed... Yeah, I... I, I, I it, it wasn't apparent to me. Um, so, uh, it does some kind of ugly American shit here. My point is, it isn't even worth talking about about putting an anti nihilist platform as a real consideration for the masses. Yeah, again, so let's just keep pretending that the majority of people are um, reproducing at a rate of three kids or more. That's not what the majority are doing. Um, hell, we have had numerous shootings, yes, shootings over abortion, pro-life akin abortionalists. The masses will never be ready for 
antinatalism. Okay, so, you know, this is just these predictions that the mass, what you're going to tell us what the, what, where the future is, what the philosophy will be. Uh, I just think that is just so obnoxious. Your prediction based on what past performance? Where, where, where have you been right before? Well, how do I credential your predictions of the future? And how do I tell that crap? How do I tell the difference between that and all the other naysayers who said something couldn't be done? How, you know, that's all I hear there. Can't do it. No, you can't get to the moon. You can't fly. You can't do this. You can't liberate women. You can't liberate the slaves. It'll ruin the economy. Yeah, it's always some goddamn I can't crap or it won't. Uh, and that's all it is. It's a, that, you know, again, these are, these are argument styles and techniques that all the classic philosophers will tell you are bogus, and yet you let these assholes just get away with it over and over and over again. If one country adopts antinatalism law, then people who want to have children will simply migrate to other countries. Well, again, this is not hard to solve through international policies, right? You subsidize, you, you incentivize with carrots, you say, look, we'll give you some financial aid if you drop your, your birth rates down by 3% a year. Whatever. I mean, not difficult to do, but you people have no imagination, you have no willingness to even try to be fair, and it's all over everything you say. You're just the most closed-minded, myopic idiots. Well, I won't get into the name calling, but goddamn. And after a couple of decades, the neighboring countries would just walk in laughing at a handful of ger ger geriatrics feebly trying to defend its borders. Oh, so they couldn't buy mercenaries? <laughs> yeah, right. Um, but, but, but again, you just, you just totally miss the point, don't you? Yes, that's right. You totally miss the point. In the nuclear age, that doesn't really matter either, because a geriatric isn't going to have to work too hard to press the old nuki button, right? So I don't think the invaders are going to invade the country where the geriatrics have their finger on the button. I think they're going to be like moving as far away from the border of their country as possible, because they're going to figure one of those old timers, the old nutballs, is going to hit the button. So right there, we win, right? So again, another vacant argument, not, you know, all this this little jokey gibber okay and they aren't even good jokes because I got to unravel the jokes so easily yep then after 80 or 90 years their children and grandchildren could move back in since any anti nihilist that stayed would have died and become too old and feeble to keep them out uh, I mean these are this, and this this is the, the, the well it's just simple minded nonsense drivel alright so the Valhalla guys fourth comment right I mean, what the fuck? Maybe you should do a video about abortion. Roe v. Wade's Supreme Court decision has been a matter of contention ever since the Supremes ruled in favor of Roe. The original Roe, Norma Jean uh, McCory was later, I don't know what this is, Philippibit, and is now pro-life. Well, who cares? Who cares? Who cares? I mean, the law was passed because there was no rational reason to tell people they had to pray to a fetus. <laughs> Jeez, you, you people are just stupid. The Nazis sterilized many Jewish women. So this is, here we go. This is on subject somehow. The Nazis sterilized many Jewish women in the concentration camps um, who they didn't kill. Um, so so who, whose fault is that? That's our fault. Uh, oh, I see. Benetarians talk about forcibly sterilizing. No, they talk about incentivizing. They talk about paying people to get sterilized. So again, yes, to get welfare. Uh, so again, you just keep lying. Fine, be a liar. Benetarians talk about forcibly sterilizing the dregs of society. So again, back this up with something. Quote somebody. No, you don't have any integrity, so you don't do that. Or at least paying them to be sterilized. Oh, oh so there's a huge difference here. Forcibly sterilizing and paying. You're going to call those the same thing, huh? Oh, it's just a question of scale. Oh, is that all it is? It's not a question of ethics, paying somebody to do the right thing. And the whip and the carrot is the same thing. It's just a question of scale. No, I think that's a, a question of intelligence, and you failed. Uh, ben Tarion is talking about forcibly sterilizing. That's just out and out dishonest. You should retract that comment and apologize for being a... Yeah, well, malicious babbling, well, whatever. Um, hey, slower, haven't you ever listened to the most famous Benetarian on YouTube? I'm not a Benetarian, but whatever. In Mendham, 
You, you know, guess what? I was making videos before I even knew Benatar existed on the subject of antinatalism. So again, I am not a Benatarian. Benatarian's contribution is fine, it's great. The asymmetry is a rational argument. Um, but this is just such crap, you people. This is, this is straw manning um, uh, and it, it's slander. Moreover, I mean, sh shall I call you unevolutionists? Okay, because that's my going to be my argument, right? You're not obeying. You're not. You're not being rational to the DNA molecule. You're not being rational to science. I'm going to call you unscientists. Okay, you have unlogicists. You're applying no logic, no reason, no honesty to the truth. Moreover, this is not a way to convince people to come to your way of thinking. And if I, and if you don't succeed in doing that convincing people that will what will you do forcibly sterilize or kill again this is all in the context of a democracy um, so so we have rules set up for how the game is played and how we define what a crime is and right now there are people who don't think women should have equal rights okay but they lost the war okay they lost the fight there's people who think blacks are not human beings okay well they lost the fight and that's the way it's going to be. There's winners and losers. We're asking for a fair fight. In a fair fight, we're going to win. Um, hi, Darwin in the morning. I have a lot of respect for your intelligence, but I don't know anywhere in David Benatar's writing that he advocated the forcible sterilization of the dregs of society. I'm not... Yeah, we'll see a guess. Okay, so she's going to explain it to Dar do in the morning that um, it's grotesque to call somebody a Benatarian and then use Benatarian to say that uh, somebody who even advocated for forcible sterilization would be a Benatarian. Because yes, Benatar doesn't say any such thing in his book. Uh, yes, Gary's a moon bat, but this line of reasoning is akin to calling Stalin a Marxist while discussing the gulags. Well, I don't even know where that goes. I don't think there's any point in calling any communist a communist. Because none of them were communists. <laughs> Jesus, they were all elitist scum. Um, in this debate, it is often difficult to know whom one is addressing. There are anti nihilists out there who would make a great effort to avoid offending. There are other, oh, who cares? What, oh, that, this is Andy's comment. Offending, like this should matter. There are others, O-T-O-H, who have pretty much abolished all boundaries of conduct. Well, I, I'm sorry, no names, please. Well, again, you, you, so you think it's good conduct to talk about people without naming them. I think that's grotesquely offensive. Um, I think it's the, the cheapest maneuver of the most desperate and weak argumentation is somebody who resorts to this idea that I can't name names. Well, that's the weakest of the weak, the gutless of the gutless. And I admit that goes for both sides. Yeah, right, exactly. There's a ton of videos made by these guys you have your civil conversations with who make very uncivil videos. All right, grotesque videos. They steal clips from videos. They manipulate them. They distort them, um, and and uh, you have you have civil conversation with those people as if that's credible. In such an environment, it's pretty much impossible to decide who speaks for which side, as no one wants to hand their autonomy over to anyone else. A touchy debate, but I suspect we will deal with it. Well, yeah, you're dealing with it by running from it. So there there is no dealing with it. You've just run from all obligation to respond to any of the counter arguments that have been made because you say somebody said a four letter word. Um, this, it's a, this is just uh, insensible nonsense. I have, no re I, have no, I have no obligation to respect the fetuses that you are placing in the road and saying I must hop over. <laughs> you know, a law is simply something that can be enforced. Contrary then, the law cannot be enforced, it's not a law. Well, I don't know, Foolish Productions is, as always, foolish. Um, all right, in, in Notebook Guy, he's generally not stupid. Let's see what he says. Unfortunately, I think Annalena's legislation, a harsh, radical one, is unrealistic. Again, the, 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 the circumstances was defined as a democratic majority believes in this. Nothing is it's unrealistic once the Democratic majority believes it. Damn it. No matter how much you're going to pay the people for not having kids, in a liberty regime, some will do the opposite. Well, again, that's like saying, we can't stop rapists. We can't discourage the behavior. We can't stop people from building nuclear bombs in their backyard. We can't stop people from having, uh, you know, cannons and moats. Yes, we can. Um, 
New natalist political parties will emerge. People will rebel. Rebel how? They'll throw their kids at us? <laughs> They'll catapult them over the gates? I mean, please. To think different is ignorant, is to ignore human nature. Well, again, it, human nature is completely being compliant to civil law for thousands of years. So, again, it's not about human nature. It's about what you can civilly enforce. You can have an anti nihilist government only under dictatorship conditions, and it's a pity. Well, again, says you, that has absolutely no relevance to anything real here. Again, we have laws about all kinds of conduct that gets into very personal areas of people's lifestyles. There's been draconian laws that existed in the past. They were certainly enforced. So this is just nonsense. You have, not, you have nothing to defend this with. Um, yes, there's a sad contradiction between law and people. Well, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, that's, you just, you, you, if you construct good law that provides fairness and justice, that's all you need to do. You give people a fair fight, they win the fight, they lose the fight. And on every issue, it's that simple. Nuclear power. You have nuclear power, you don't have nuclear power. You give people a fair fight, let them duke it out, and you make a decision. Not that complicated. It really isn't that complicated. You just want to make it complicated. Because that suits your purposes. It doesn't suit the truth. All right, quick update on the website. But really, this is just so offensive. Uh, I mean, all these subject changes, now that oh, everybody's a Benetarian, um, it's, just, it's, just, it's just so offensive. All right, imposition. This was a good video on... Um, the whole idea of the imposition is just such an obvious trespass against well-established ethical principles. Having children is an obnoxious, forcing, uh, imposing of your philosophical optimism on somebody else. You have no rights to do that. I origins, it's just, a, it's a, you know, it's just an unpleasant dilemma, but it's a dilemma and you have to deal with it. I origins is sort of about the origins of our personality, how we become who we are, what happens, what sticks to what. It's kind of a good video. Um, Andy and his tyranny of the imposition, some more on the imposition, just the, the basic argument. The real tyrants are these people who think they have a right to impose life, to create it, to be God, to play God. You can't get more tyrannical than to play God with somebody else's welfare. Um, this is a mellow response to uh, a derived energy bit of um, good literature. Uh, you know, it's very, very good. These are all, these are really all winners. Um, I, we, conference report, and Professor Antonia a response video to their initiation of a subject, a little bit on this whole subject of an eye, so that's where it starts. So these two videos are really good on the eye. Eleven questions from the in notebook guy, so I answered his eleven questions. It's a perfectly adequate video. Um, I can't understand, just basically, just lamenting how distant I am from, logically and, and sensibly and rationally, from these people who just can't get even the simplest of logical principles. Um, and there's the last update video there. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven good videos and such. Yeah, so that's enough of an update. Yeah, I guess I'm doing that Adam show on Friday. So you can submit questions at an old fan video. Um, yeah, so who knows where that'll go. Uh, <laughs> you know, we'll see. Everything is something until it's nothing something like that yeah well that's what this guy keeps arguing let's always remember this context and he doesn't believe it matters even though I still remember stories written by Abigail Adams um, to her husband about some woman who had surgery and oh it's just horrible and it's still in my mind it's still playing inside my brain and so even though it happened 200 years ago it's still there it still lives because people are aware of it. And all I have to do is describe it as a story. There is billions of stories happening every single day. And all of them have great merit. And the reason why they don't live on is because there's just too many of them. And they can't be recorded because we've done this so sloppily, this living thing. And so, yeah, they don't become recorded history. But they don't die. They don't ever die as things that mean something. We just don't see them. We just don't recognize the meaning. 
we don't account for it. We don't see it, but it's there. It existed. It's part of the price paid for this existence. And you people should have some humble respect for the danger, for the, for the jeopardy. Um, you are so willing to throw others in. Amazing arrogance.